Welcome to Bahrain. Formula One is back and the first day of testing is done and dusted. Eight hours of running under our driver's belts. One thing, though, has remained constant from last year on this first day of school, and that is that Max Verstappen of Red Bull has topped the timing sheets. Will Buxton and Jolien Palmer alongside me. How are you both? How have you enjoyed your day? It's been great. It's just been wonderful to be back in the Formula One paddock, back amongst the greatest racing drivers in the world. And... Uh, yeah, as you say, first day back at school. It's my yeah. favourite day of the year. I love it. Jolien, for you? Yeah, I was going to say something similar. It's really nice to see new cars and potentially new pecking orders. You don't know what's going to happen from, uh, from day one. We still don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, but it's, all, it's just nice to get into testing and yeah, see what's going to unfold. Should we get the testing bingo cards out the way of the caveats? We don't know fuel loads and it's day one of testing and it's only testing and all of that to come, but we will try to dive into what we have seen out there and indeed try to unpick some of the questions that we know are coming up. I think in terms of what's been interesting from a technological and innovative point of view, a variety of noses in that grid. <laughs> yeah. Alpines, fat, wide, and then it sort of has diverged from there. Just, Will, for you, that innovation is one thing, but also the fact we're seeing these cars on track perform at such a level over such a long period of time as well. Yeah, so for me, the reliability today yeah. was was astounding. That's just where we're at with the, uh, you know, with the with the sort of the static regulations uh, as they are in terms of, of engines and power units. Um, yeah, just, just so many laps put in. You were saying during commentary today, and I remember the days not too long ago where we turn up for testing and there'd be a red flag every 10 minutes because yeah. another car had broken down at the side of the track. None of that today, not a single red flag, uh, which I think is really indicative of the reliability that we saw. Just the one yellow flag uh, for Alex Albon with that fuel pump issue in the morning. Jolien, for you, again, that, that innovation is something you've been looking at. Yeah, well, I mean, you mentioned the third year of stable regs and the reliability is very good, but we're seeing still some innovation. We're seeing change of concepts for some teams as well, moving towards last year's Red Bull designs-ish. But then Red Bull moved the, moved the game on this year. They really innovated. And Mercedes as well with, a, with a quite a nice looking front wing that, that they're yeah. quite proud of, I think. Red Bull have stepped up once again, haven't they? They have shifted the goalposts. They've moved on and moved on in their design and indeed on the timing sheets as well. 1.1 seconds was the gap to Lando Norris. It's an ominously impressive start from Max Verstappen. Always well, is, isn't it? But it always is. What have you made of Red Bull today? Look, so many, you say question marks, so many question marks over that car, over the design philosophy coming into this season. Adrian Newey said we couldn't stand still for a third season and push that same concept into a third year. We were just too worried that people were going to catch up. So we've, we've, we've had to go different. We've had to take chances. It's not a direct copy of what Mercedes were running with the zero pod. I know there's been a lot of talk about could they adopt a zero pod on the car. Looking at the architecture underneath the side pods, I'm not convinced that that would be immediately possible. But the haunches, the way that they're getting the airflow you know, from the halo pushing back to the rear wing, that's 100% Mercedes influenced. And it's just been fascinating to watch how it's been out on track because it didn't look massively comfortable in the early running on those harder tires on the slippery track. By the end of the day, it was compliant, it was quick. Max looked super comfortable. It was singing, wasn't it? Well, that's the thing. When, when their car got un unveiled at the launch last week, you're thinking, did they need, did they need to do this? this? Yeah. They dominated last year. Just, they could almost roll out last year's car yeah. and be competitive, <laughs> let alone add some performance to it. But they've revolutionized it. And you're thinking, have they gone too far? Have they made a, a mistake trying to do this? Um, or is it going to be magic? The first hour, the car was looking a little bit nervous on the rear end. Everyone was struggling for grip on the, on the hard tyres. Max was at, at that point. Scrabbling around, the car looked untidy. As soon as he put on the, the medium, the, the grippier rubber, it just came alive and certainly looks more towards the magic end than the mistake end, I would yeah. say. Max Verstappen with all of the running for today. Sergio Perez will step into that car tomorrow. George Russell, the only other driver to spend all day in the W15 for him. Lewis Hamilton will step in tomorrow. Red Bull sister team, RB, which is going to confuse me because when I write Red Bull, you write in my RB. notes, I write, I write RB. So I'm already getting confused by this. I, I also called Salba Alfa Romeo earlier. So it's going to take <laughs> all of us quite a while to get used to all of this. But RB equally looking impressive. Ricardo towards the end of the session, just beginning to really lean into the car, wasn't he? Sonoda had a tidy morning. Yeah. Ricardo had a great afternoon. Again, car looks switched on, looks dialed in. No major issues for them, no major stoppages, run plan, all went to plan. It was a great day for RB. Um, and the headline times were good. I don't know, we can't read too much into it, but 
nothing went wrong. And from a, a first day of testing, that really is all you can ask. And when you look at where they were last year, how uncompetitive they were, how even scraping to one point was a result to them in the early part of last year, this is a, a demonstrably better start to a season. What, what you want from a car on day one of testing is balance and compliance, basically. And for there some teams in the past of Mercedes with the zero pods, uh, Ferrari even the start of last year, when the car's erratic, and Williams have been complaining about this in the past as well, when the car's unstable, it's very unnerving for the drivers. Sometimes it can be quite quick, but a lot of the time you're making mistakes here and there, you're having to compromise the balance, dial in, understeer, and make it a bit slower. But I'm seeing from the Red Bull look good straight away, obviously, is, is had it, the Red Bull have had an amazing day, but the RB in the hands of Daniel Ricciardo looked quick, it looked really nicely balanced, and it was consistent as well to the end of the day. So I think RB are another team that are going to be very happy with this. I think we can certainly place them in, in our list of sort of not winners to losers. It's only day one. Good, but day. good day. Good day to relatively less good day. <laughs> I'd say RB are more towards the top of the, the I'd good say, I'd day. I'd say top five today for, for RB. Top five. Yeah. Top five is what Daniel Ricciardo hopes to be fighting for as well. Of course, a clear out in that team. You've got Lauren Mechias coming as an, in as team principal, CEO Peter Bayer and Alan Permain joining that team as well from Alpine where he was last season. So it's a team chock full of experience at the very top. Daniel Ricciardo, as I said, has already indicated they want to be fighting for top fives in the first half of this season. We can hear from him on day one of testing. I think this is a, a year where the team, yeah, really tries to establish themselves and kind of stand on their own two feet and, and obviously yeah, then try to establish a, a fight towards the front of the midfield. I think, yeah, wins and podiums are a, a little bit of a, probably a wish at the moment more than maybe a reality. But uh, as the year goes on, I think we will progress and hopefully uh, keep getting closer and closer to the front. So a very positive start for Red Bull and sister team RB. Now, a team last year who endured a torrid testing, a torrid start to the season, the one behind me here, McLaren. And I tell you what, it has been night and day for them this season, hasn't it? What a day they have had comparatively to last, Will. What have your thoughts been on, on McLaren? Landon Norris, of course, P2 in the timing sheets. I know we can't take uh, too much into consideration with timings on day one, but yes, the gap is 1.1, but he's up there. He really is up there, and the team have looked composed, calm. It's been a methodical day. Piastri in the morning, Lando in the afternoon. And as you say, you compare it with 12 months ago and the car was falling apart. When it wasn't falling apart, it was slow. They made massive changes to the technical infrastructure of the team immediately after the test with Zach Brown later yes, admitting he wished yeah. he'd made that decision six months previously. So to then fast forward through a season in which they improved all the way through to really be, I think, the second fastest team at the end of the year. They're where I think they hoped they'd be, maybe a bit closer to Red Bull than, well, they hope they'd be closer to Red Bull than they, than they maybe are today. But it's been, a, I, th I think, a perfect day for them. The perfect start to the year, particularly in relation to last year. And I think it's, it's not just a change of pace that they've had, the competitiveness, but the, the whole mindset. I like that they methodically worked through the day. They didn't rush out straight away. Uh, Oscar Piastri was in the car this morning and they were just doing a lot of in and outs and not rushing to get laps on the board. They had faith in, in just sticking to the run plan and in the end accumulated a decent amount of laps as well as finding a bit of pace. It's, it is it's so far away from where they were 12 months ago. And let's not forget, this is a team that, that has been rocked over the winter with the loss of Gilles de Ferran, who died very unexpectedly. Lando Norris running a tribute helmet for him uh, today. Gilles was very quiet behind the scenes in terms of the F1 operation, but was absolutely vital in that turnaround last year and getting the team back to that position of, of respectful competitiveness. He will be so sorely missed within this paddock and by that team. So I think they, they, they did a great job today for, for him and seeing them, you know, hopefully fighting for a podium in the, in the early races would be a, yeah, be a, a fitting tribute to him. Yeah, for sure. Very well said. And I think, Jolien, picking up on your point there about how methodical they were, equally at the start of the afternoon session, we saw Lando Norris sitting on a little stool in the garage, <laughs> uh, unable to go out. They'd had the big barriers up in front of the garage. They'd had the floor off the car. Uh, they were clearly making setup changes. Lando wasn't out for a good 30, 45 minutes or so, I believe it was. And there was no panic. There was no rush. There was no sense of urgency to an extent or a hurried franticness to get out and prove something because it seems they have faith in what they've produced for this season yeah I, I think they just got they, they're not they are not panicking at the position they were in and last year at the launch they knew that they were not in a great position they, they'd run the numbers and they were worried this year they've obviously when you've when you've bought a, 
a B spec car, which they did last year, and it works, and then they can add upgrades and they work, you have confidence in what you're doing back at base. And so I think they, they had the reassurance. They run the numbers early on with, with Oscar in the car. But then don't get in at Tiswas when things are not going right. Tis just, <laughs> you just You just hold it together. And honestly, that first hour after, after lunch today, it was not only Lando out, but Will and I were on commentary. No was one was no going. One no one was out. So, it was a lazy start to the afternoon, wasn't it? They didn't miss it? a lot, yeah. <laughs> no, that is very true. Sorry, Tiswas made me laugh. That's a very oh, British expression. Tis yeah, love that. Uh, moving on from McLaren to Aston Martin then. Look, they were the story of testing, the sensational leap they made from seemingly P7 in this paddock up to, I mean, on the day in testing last year, P2 yeah. into the first race, challenging, up there, challenging for podiums, getting podiums, challenging Red Bull. They've had an equally strong start. It's not obviously the same leap because there was perhaps nowhere to leap to, but they're certainly up there keeping within P4 and P3, I suppose. Alonso's time sticking where it was from the morning session. I find it very difficult to choose between Aston Martin and Ferrari for who I think was kind of third best yeah. in the pecking order today. But Aston Martin, Fernando Alonso, 77 laps straight off the bat this morning. The car looked purposeful, poised. It looked really, really great. And he was just able to push on from literally from the first minute uh, of today's session and uh, I think they'll be feeling pretty confident after today. It actually looked at first like 2023 all over again when Fernando was just was hustling on and the Aston was right up the, the top order for the morning. Fernando did loads of laps, uninterrupted running and it, yeah you, you sort of could forget that they went wrong with the direction in the second half of last year and that's the big thing for Aston Martin is did they learn from their missteps and can they put that into place? It's definitely a good day. The other thing for Aston Martin is their biggest weakness last year was high-speed corners. There are not really many here. So I think they should be more competitive here than, than elsewhere. And on other tracks, maybe you'd see um, how big a step they've made. But certainly here, a, a very good day one. Was it this day last year that you bet Jolien Fernando Alonso um, would get a win? It, no, was, it wasn't even no, a podium, it was, it, was, it was a win. I think it was day three. It was day, it was three, day three I made three. that bet. No, if it was a podium, away. I'd have won the bet. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> Sorry, of I'd course. won the bet many times over. <laughs> yes, you would. Uh, I'd be able to buy a house. On the table, wasn't it? Um, have, has he paid up, Jolien? No, you know. I'm saying double or Tight bucks and hasn't yet. Oh, Roll it in. Yeah. I um, love that. And Lance Stroll looked equally a day and night for him compared to where he was last season. Well, he wasn't not in here. the car, not here. Yeah. Obviously, with the two broken wrists, uh, the damage to the toe as well, and fighting to get back fit to get into the car for the first race, in which he did. Uh, but very, very much put him on the back foot for the start of that season, where the Aston Martin car was perhaps in, in the best window that we saw it all season. So a strong start for Aston Martin across the board. You mentioned Ferrari there. Yeah. And you can't quite split them, Will. Well, that's Talk just because, that. So Ferrari looked really quick today. Um, and they started off the day strongly, but then the car started to get a bit skittish. It started to get away from, certainly started to get away from, from Charles Leclerc. So while I think they've had a, a positive day, there are slight inconsistencies. So I didn't mind that so much. I completely agree with the, the car's characteristics. Started off compliant, then got just, yeah, skittish is yeah. the right word. Uh, it was not taking the bumps well, it was lost all compliance. Charlotte had a lot of lockups, was fighting the car suddenly a lot. But it looked to me like they were, you, on a day one of a test, you start with a, a new car and you run through run-of-the-mill changes. So it looked like they just added stiffness. The more stiffness you add to the car, the better your aero platform, the more downforce you can kind of run, exploit. And it looked like they just went over the top of that. So you find your upper limit and then you dial it back in and Carlos got in the car and looked more comfortable again. So I, I think it looked to me not an inherent problem with the car, but more set up parameters that they could control. Experimenting and that's exactly yes. what testing is for. Yeah, for sure. So um, Ferrari then, you think kind of third, fourth alongside there, up, up against it, not a bad day at all for Ferrari. One of our good teams of the day. Yeah, I think Red Bull, McLaren, Ferrari and Aston pretty close. Do you agree with that? Because Will's already put this out on Twitter. I've already put it out. X, of course I Whatever have. you want to call it. Uh, I, get, uh, look, I think Red Bull and then the rest. Yeah. <laughs> At this stage. There, everyone's so no, it's, close, it's aren't they? It is, it is it, impossible. No, it is. I, no, I, I agree. I said it at the end of commentary today. I said, you know, we don't know. We think we know some things, but I don't think we do know a lot of things yet. And things we do know may not be what we actually believe. We I know. hope we don't know a lot of we things. Don't I don't know any. We hope the gap is not as big as it is. Mercedes, um, I was in the pit lane earlier on and came to the Mercedes garage. Uh, again, barriers up, floor off George Russell's car. And often when that's happening, obviously, we're seeing 
big setup changes. They then took the time to show me the steering wheel, the new um, WhatsApp button <laughs> on the steering wheel, which is how the Don't drivers will... Don't text and drive, kids. Correct. That's not this kind of WhatsApp. Uh, it's a WhatsApp button. It is branding. It is a sponsorship deal. And it is, they think, probably the smallest in all voice of world notes. sport. <laughs> Yeah, they could do maybe voice notes while driving. Again, don't, don't advise that. You're not supposed that. to touch your phone don't while you're driving, your Laura. Okay. It's bad advice. This has become sort of traffic advice. We'll move on. What I'm saying is that back. they showed me they showed back. me the steering wheel, the WhatsApp button, um, a new innovation. A new, uh, it's not an innovation. It's a sponsorship. Mercedes fans will be year. hoping for more <laughs> innovation than a WhatsApp button. I think so. Um, the floor of the car, setup change is happening. Um, it was back in the garage for a bit. He was on the back foot a little bit this morning, but... He just methodically got his head down and got those laps in towards the end of the afternoon. So a lot of laps on the board for George. Yeah. He was in the car for the whole day, not going for glory runs, not going for, I think, low fuel runs. The, the, the racy kind of runs looked, looked pretty consistent, looked pretty good. Really difficult to figure out where they are in that ultimate mix at the top, but they're there, they're, they're, they're top five. Um, you know, RB just kind of jumping up into there with, with a couple of headline times and maybe making themselves look a little brighter than Mercedes. Um, but just because Mercedes, we're, we're sticking to the plan. What's fascinating with Mercedes is they have finally moved away from the concept with which they have had no luck over two years. So what's fascinating is they're now running a car concept that most other teams in this paddock have been running for two years and have a good baseline knowledge of. This was Mercedes' first real day of running this, this type of car. Okay, Red Bull have moved completely away from that to something else. But for the other, you know, for the 80% of this paddock, Mercedes kind of find themselves two years behind the curve on that. So a really important day for them. They just needed to plug the laps in, which they did. I think I saw a bit of work going on with the steering column, which you're going to have to do because they've moved the driver position back in the car Ten this year, which was something that, that both drivers said they yeah. wanted, um, just in terms of, of, uh, of their comfort within the, the, the car and, and feeling they had a, a good handle on it. But look, I don't think anything to worry about for, for Mercedes fans at the end of today comprehensively covered off. I, just, I love the Sorry. fact that we're at the end of day one and you're like, right, they're top five, RB have moved up. <laughs> Normally we get to the end of three days of testing, we're like, do we have to make predictions? It's so hard. And you've just come in. Let's Strong. go. Day Let's one. make the bet day tonight. I think, I think Mercedes, they've got, I like what they've done with the car in theory. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we can judge too much on, on today. And so much of what they have done with that car is dealing with, as the drivers put it, a spiteful rear axle, which just wasn't giving them any confidence or, or stability through the corners. And then equally, they had a car that was draggy on the straight. So it was a kind of problem. Worst of both in, worlds. Exactly. The balance was, the trade-off wasn't even there. They weren't getting any, any sort of benefit from either side of that car. So hopefully it's improved all round for Mercedes drivers, Lewis Hamilton and George Russell. Lewis will be in that car tomorrow, George Russell, with a good number of laps today. Uh, one former Mercedes driver, Valtteri Bottas, is now looking luminescent in fluoro green for Sauber. We can hear from him. Yeah, it was good. Good morning, because I think the main thing is on the first morning not to have issues. And uh, yeah, we got pretty much everything done. So that's always a good start. And that's the main thing for day one is to get out there, get running, get a bit of a feel of the car. And um, what I'm positive about, I definitely feel improvements compared to last year. And actually, the initial feeling was quite similar than what I had in the simulator. So at least that correlation is more or less as it should. So on, on that sense, a good starting point. Now, I think the next days it will be getting a bit more towards fine tuning and actually finding more, more performance. So a positive Valtteri Bottas on day one here at the Bahrain International Circuit. And I'm going to say one thing, and that is when I first saw the Sauber livery, uh, I wasn't the biggest fan, but seeing it on track, stunning. It's Damn stunning. It. It's it absolutely ab stunning. Honestly, kind of the same. Like, it was a bit Tron vibe, Tron. but... Tron. You know the movie Tron? No, I don't. I don't. Let's not go down that, that wormhole. Okay, so bit Sorry Tron, bit Tron know, vibe. Tron. But, but yeah, it kind of like, oh, it just looks like someone slapped a load of Flovis on it. Seeing it in the flesh, and particularly Beautiful. as the light started to go down, and it was yeah, very sexy at night. It, it looks mega. Julian, Do you know it's status Grand Prix. Our niche fans. Oh, remember, GP3. Uh, junior, junior series. Who's your favourite status GP driver? This is actually commentary chat for tomorrow, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so we'll it. It. tune in tomorrow <laughs> for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But it's very status Grand Prix, and I used to quite like that. It's just, it's eye-catching, isn't it? Esteban Ocon there, just walking through the back of shop. Good evening to him. Evening. How was your day? Thumbs, Thumbs up. up. There you go. We'll talk about Alpine in just one moment. Uh, but livery aside and how sexy it may have looked and whatever niche 
content that's going to come into commentary tomorrow. It was a really solid day, I, I feel, for Salva. Will, where were they on your <laughs> eighth, definitive list? <laughs> eighth on my definitive list today. Uh, no, look. Um, Difficult to read yeah. uh, into them. Uh, James Key uh, has come on board mm -hmm. down here. Of course, we were talking about the, the horrible year that McLaren had. He, he made way after testing last year, but has found his way uh, down there as Jan Monchot has moved over to the FIA. So a new technical leadership there. He won't have had time yet to really get his feet under the table and, and, and ring the changes that he may want to with that car. But fairly tidy start to the, to the year, I thought. Yeah, no frills, decent. I think they'll be happy. Got the job done, haven't they? And we've just seen Esteban Ocon walk through. Of course, he was in the car today along with Pierre Gasly. Ocon with a little journey uh, across the gravel at some point. They had to just check the floor um, of the car, but all's well for Alpine. They didn't necessarily set the timing sheets alight at any one point, perhaps not entering the group chat just yet, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where that analogy came from, but here you go, Will. Pick you're that one you're up. still on your Mercedes WhatsApp yeah. button. Um, <laughs> Yeah, difficult to read Alpine um, today. I think yeah. for them, I mean, look, they had such a disrupted year last year. By the end of it, the real vibe within the team was that, you know, they were moving in the right direction. Their upgrade packages didn't really work last year, not as they have done traditionally through, through history. They used to bring upgrade packages and every single one would, would give a marked improvement. And they didn't have that last year. They really lost their way. So, yeah, I, I don't know, mate. For, for, you, for, for me, it was, it, was, it was a difficult day to read uh, yeah. for Alpine. They were, they were definitely doing their own thing. I mean, they were laden with fuel for a lot of it, running hard tyres. When Esteban uh, dropped the car in, in the morning session, ran through the gravel, the car looked a handful, but it did for so many drivers on, on the hard rubber. Uh, Pierre put on some, some medium tyres, the C3s, looked ballpark okay. But they've, con they've, they've made a concept change, haven't they? So they're, they're not having the highest hopes immediately. I think there'll be a team that potentially take a little bit longer to unlock that that what is it they car. said at the launch everything changed except the steering wheel yes something like that the, yeah. only the steering wheel has survived from last year's well it car. survived longer than that it's jolien's old steering wheel isn't <laughs> it yeah. survived longer than me yeah <laughs> <laughs> and and many another driver as well in that team but it is it's my 2016 wheel they're still using wow okay good sustainability stuff. Good. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, moving on to Williams, who... New steering wheel. New steering wheel, new display <laughs> now on the steering wheel, not in the chassis. Lovely segue, Will. You're welcome. Williams with a more difficult day. Alex Albon with the fuel pump issue earlier on this morning. Um, Daniel Ricciardo, as the team behind camera frantically point in a direction, has just walked through shot. Hello, Daniel. Uh, you, we can't turn the camera to see him, but he's off. He's walking at that huge smile. has just lit up the Bahrain paddock, as it always does when he is about. As I was saying, Williams, fuel pump issue for Alex Albon, then a drive shaft issue, issue limited laps on the board, lost track time, delays to Logan Sargent getting out there as well. Tricky, wasn't it? I can't really add anything to that. It was, yeah. I mean, they is, it, is, is, there a, is there a cause for concern there? Are these technical gremlins, mechanical gremlins that you want to get out the way on day one of testing? You'd rather have them in testing than during free practice one and two on the first Grand Prix weekend exactly. of the year. And look, Williams were the last team to, to let their actual car break cover because they were pushing it, pushing it, pushing it as late as they could because... They want to push themselves up the grid. They want to take the chances, uh, you know, and, and, and really push themselves into that conversation with the likes of Alpine and RB and, and, and pushing on up towards the top five. Look, they made an amazing step last year from 10th and bottom of the pile up to 7th. This is where it gets tough to move from 7th to 6th to 5th. That's hard. That's really, really hard. But is it a disaster of a day? I don't think so. They, they want these things to happen in testing, not at, not at the race. Was it the day they wanted, absolutely not. They, no. wanted, they wanted clear running, clean running, and to be top of the pile, but... James Wells echoed those points that you said. That you, obviously, you want this to happen on day one here, not Friday next week. And also, he's, this is the first build period that he's been part of. Yes, he's now been at Williams for a year, but this is the first winter he spent with the team as well. He felt an immense sense of pride in seeing that car head out. And although it's not been a smooth sailing day, there's perhaps still cause for optimism with Williams, Jolian? I think, they had a, I think they had the most disappointing day. And I think it's all with the context of what Will said. You know, they were the last to put their car on track. Mm. It was just yesterday in a, in a filming day, shakedown effectively. And you know, in theory, that was because they were waiting to push the, the uh, design process to be as late as possible, build the car late to get the most performance. 
So the reliability wasn't great today. There was stoppages in the morning and the afternoon. And I didn't love the characteristics of the car, right. if I'm honest. When I saw uh, Alex Alban, who's walking past us now. Hey, up. Hey, Alex. He's, uh, he seems a very happy chap, but he looked like he was fighting the car quite a lot as well. Mm. And we talk compliance in that rear end. That's something that James Vowles has said and, and the drivers have said. It was tricky last year. I just, they were one team that I saw, it still looked a little tricky. Only wants to run the C4. <clears throat> as well and didn't set the, the timing boards alight. And if there's something to cure rear instability, it's softer tyres. Mm -hmm. And it's early days, maybe they were running a lot of fuel, maybe they can exploit a lot more on the car. I'm sure they can, it's so, it, that was the day one morning. But of all the teams, it just didn't strike me as making the step forward that I was hoping to see from them. I think the optimism I'm trying to squeeze from the situation is the fact that my bold prediction for the year has been that Alex Albon will get a podium. Um, which, it, that's the James Vowles effect. I, it is. You need to stop is. interviewing him. He has, he has, he has this, a way, doesn't he, he that he makes does. you so, just believe yeah. so wholeheartedly in his vision and what he's doing. Unwittingly, I had the same bold prediction this year. So great, great minds, minds think alike. Yeah. And, I, and I was watching I should the have car taken that bet first. yesterday, shouldn't I? <laughs> I was watching the car in the first hour. So I was like, oh, this seems we're going yeah. to need some chaos. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe they'll develop the car nicely. It's only testing. Bring in the caveats. We're all good. Yeah, lovely. Some caveats there. Haas, Will, go and give us your stat about Haas. Oh, that's a great stat. Uh, they may not have been massively quick, but they did the most laps of any team. 148 laps on the board for Haas today. That's super impressive. Just a few more than Max Verstappen, of course, in the Red Bull with a full day of running. Uh, but not necessarily, as you say, the fastest team out there. They set their expectations low. They yeah. set out their parameters of what they wanted to achieve, which is essentially understand the car, understand the tires. So if that was their intention today, you hope they've got enough data after nearly 150 laps in the car to be able to press on tomorrow and, and, and start showing a bit of progress forward. Our first testing, of course, without Gunter Steiner for a number of years. Ayo Komatsu has come in there at the helm, Jolien, and as you say, Will, very much setting out the lowest expectation for what they can achieve, but hoping that now there is the process is in place for the car to develop and for what he called a closed loop between the feedback the drivers are giving here on track to engineering, to the pit wall, back to the factory, closing off that loop uh, of feedback to enable, I guess, further development of the car. That's a nice buzzword. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll run with it. The thing, it used to be a golden metric, didn't it? The, the you know, who does the most, it's not about who goes the fastest, it's about who does the most. But I think we're, we're uh, diminishing returns now because everyone is doing over 100 laps, two race yeah. distance for pretty much everyone today. But I think Williams are the only team that didn't do two race distance. So at that point, you're thinking, maybe they should be in the garage a bit more and trying more stuff. Well, you know, there's, you've got to find a bit of pace as well. And Io, I, I, I've worked with Io before. I think he's a really methodical guy. I like that he's going to close off the loop. Uh, I, really, I really back that idea. Um, but I think it's going to take time, isn't it? And, and he knows that. And Hass have certainly not pulled up any trees today. OK, thanks very much, chaps. They are our 10 teams. We've rattled through them. That's how we believe they have fared on day one of testing. But look, it's only day one. Let's hear now from Logan Sargent and Kevin Magnuson to see how they think they have fared. The car is very different, um, so that takes some ironing out, but in a positive way. So I think it's, it's the direction that we needed to head. And um, once we get it figured out, it'll be a better car. Um, but yeah, for the moment, I've only done 11 laps, so I'm looking forward to a whole day tomorrow. And um, yeah, hopefully we can just understand a few of the issues we had today and get on top of them. Are you sure you had that moment, when it, maybe when you hit a bump, kind of just talk us through that, what happened there? <laughs> yeah, it was unexpected. Um, but yeah, we... We just bottomed and um, it snapped pretty quickly. But um, no, at least, at least I know not to do it tomorrow. Nice to get back out. You know, it's always, always just fun getting back in the car yeah, after after the winter off. So um, I think we had a, a pretty positive morning. Uh, we, we just focused on long runs, uh, really trying to address the issues that you know. Uh, that we had last year with the tires and you know so that's gonna be our main focus I think we um, we're happy about what we saw this morning but there's clearly a lot of a lot of work to do and uh, yeah everyone's fired up to to investigate and and to learn about uh, this new car and see if we um, have made progress or not and that is almost it from day one of testing we've got two more days to go but the Formula One season for 2024 very much up and running. Thank you for your thoughts, boys. I'd like to get one more, if I may, and that is your biggest learning
from day one of testing and yes, it's only day one, etc. Don't tweet your top 10 at the end of day one. Yeah, probably the, probably the, the way forward. Don't publish a definitive constructor standing strategy. It might be right. You it's might have be, everyone might be coming to you <laughs> by the end of the year. <laughs> my think, 23rd year of doing this. You'd I think you'd I, learn. I think Mystic I, Will. I, look, biggest learning from today, Red Bull have still got a massive target on their back. Yep. It's the biggest learning, isn't it? Obviously, Max finished okay, a second just clear. just me and do something different. <laughs> I'll just can. tell you something. Yeah. That's the most dominant day of testing we've seen in Bahrain in, in a group test era. A full second between uh, Verstappen and the rest of the field that are really nicely close. So I think that is the big takeaway. Uh, the other takeaways, I guess it's good reliability and the rest mm. of the pack is really close and Will's prediction is, is crazy because it's so difficult to call. But you know, <laughs> Red, Red Bull are the ones that everyone's going to be a bit scared of tonight. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thank you very much indeed, Pleasure. both of you. Um, well, that's it from day one of testing. That is what we have learned or not learned or who knows. We have some questions. We have some answers. We have a few more questions for tomorrow as well. We will see you then for day two of testing here in Bahrain.